I'm going down a hill in the shopping cart. Whoa. What's a story from your life so outrageous that you wouldn't believe it if someone else was telling it? Jasmine Jen says a teacher maltreating a student. Took a paper, wrote humiliating sentences like I'm stupid or I'm disgusting on it, then took a paper stapler and used it to stick that paper onto the student's clothes. Then hit the student, pulled their ears, told the entire class to say, I hate that student. The student is nine. She did nothing but talking to her best friend because she was bored because the freaking teacher wasn't doing her job. The teacher was sitting and reading a book and didn't want anyone to disturb her. Thank God my friend supported my story and she still remembers. I asked her a few years ago because I thought my brain might be making this whole thing up. That student is me. No wonder I'm so scared of all people and over-respecting everyone and apologizing to everybody as if I were Canadian. Wow, we started this one off real dark, didn't we? Uh, OP says, wow, I'm so sorry you had to go through that. That's absolutely terrible. And I echo that sentiment. The thing is, it was a private school. My parents worked several jobs so we could afford it. <laughs> and look at what they're affording. This is terrifying. Did you ever tell your parents what happened? Yes, they didn't have a problem. They told me that I deserved it, in fact. Every time I asked someone for their help, they'd tell me that it was all my fault, even though I'm a good person and I haven't hurt anyone. I believe you're a good person. You were a child and you didn't deserve any of this. Thank you for your comments. Honestly, that is a horrifying story. I had a similar thing happen in first grade. This kid named Jeremy would get picked on. Our first grade teacher would put him in a playpen and like make him suck a pacifier and all this kind of weird stuff. I told my mom about it. My mom was mortified, but yeah, it's not her kid. So I guess she decided not to move on it or maybe the school board just sweeped it under the rug. I was a child. I don't remember first grade that much. But stuff like this definitely does happen, so if your kids say something, uh, maybe investigate it. <laughs> Don't believe it 100%, but do look into it. And yeah, moving on. Victor Swimwell says, That time I trucked electronics into Mexico without being robbed by the Mexican police. <laughs> kind of reminds me a lot of the Philippines, honestly. Good luck getting that thing through customs. Oh my god, I thought that only happens in the Middle East. I'm pretty sure customs agents all over the world are just some of the most corrupt individuals possible. Doppelfrog says, There's actually lots of places where the Mexican police don't rob people. Splumen says, Yeah, like not in Mexico. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to top that one, honestly. <laughs> so funny. All right, Max Kenzer says, I was staying over at a friend's house when I was 16. It was pretty late and we were in her room watching a movie when all of a sudden we saw headlights coming at her window really quickly like it was about to hit the house. We both screamed and jumped out of the bed and then nothing. We ran to look out the window but no cars were in the driveway besides her mom's. The driveway was pretty long and their house was pretty far off the road and isolated so if someone was turning around we would have seen them. Shortly after the phone rang, it was the police calling to tell her mom that her dad had drunkenly crashed into someone's house. Everyone was okay, luckily. I mean, the house wasn't okay. <laughs> we told her mom what we experienced, but she didn't believe us. No one we told did, so we just decided from then on to keep that experience to ourselves. We still talk about it once in a while, 23 years later. It is one of the weirdest experiences that I have had to date. God, I love paranormal stuff like this, especially real life stuff. If you're looking for the fake stuff, we got it over at my creepypasta channel, uh, Dayton Dies. I I'd appreciate if you check that out. <laughs> Sticky Finger says his thoughts were of you in that moment when he was crashing. Unholy Roller says, yeah, take this, you little <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh! The comment section is pretty cool sometimes. <laughs> you guys cranking me up today. Lord. Oh, this one will bring the mood down. Stonius123 says, We found a human finger in front of a dingo den at Uluru about two weeks before the Lindy Chamberlain case came to trial. And that case absolutely tragic if you didn't know about it. Nimix TV says, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Which is a, a fair reaction. Stonius clarifies, yeah. They took statements and sifted through the cave, but didn't find anything else. 
The finger was the last knuckle of an adult digit, i.e. not Azaria, but the crown case rested on the idea that dingoes don't attack or eat humans, which has been since disproved since that incident on Fraser Island. Guy Fieri Stash wants to point out, the Lindy Chamberlain case is one of the saddest miscarriages of justice. Imagine having your infant daughter ripped from your life, then being convicted of killing her two years later and spending three years in jail for that, having your marriage fall apart, and being the center of a media frenzy while just trying to grieve for your lost daughter who was actually killed by a dingo. Horrible. And the fact that it almost became a pop culture joke. I always think naming the band in Buffy Dingoes Ate My Baby was particularly distasteful and callous. Poor Azaria and her poor mother and family. It is one of those weird pop culture things that's born from tragedy. I think laughter can be healing in a lot of cases, but there's also stuff like, you know, consequences will never be the same, and I didn't understand the full context of that meme until looking into Jesse Slaughter and Davey Vanity and what happened there. I think most people are just so disconnected from the whole situation that they don't think of it as anything besides a ha-ha funny joke. But yes, people's lives were, were torn asunder. Though I don't think the people making those jokes are actually, you know, considering the real world ramifications. They're just trying to make it funny. And if they know the full context and still want to make the joke, well, I suppose they'll have to answer for that uh, with karma a little bit later on. Seriously, the password says the entirety of my life. Really? The entirety of your life was so outrageous that nobody would believe it? Sounds like party demon. Whoa! I went to Subway. I bought extra cheese. <laughs> uh, I drank champagne out of a melon, dudes. Whoa. Okay, cool. That sounds super outrageous. You really, like, just couldn't make anything up? That's how non-creative... All right, never mind. <laughs> Whatever. Brush Novel 9003 said, I had two flat tires within an hour. Repaired the first one fitted the spare, and drove away only to get a second puncture. If my driver told me about this, I would have a hard time believing this story. Well, this is what you get for driving through the rusty knife and screw factory, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I hope you learn to never take the same road again. And that's fair. I mean, the story is believable enough, but that's not really the tire's problems. <laughs> it's just the road being a complete piece of crap. New understanding says, how about, how about the time I had to do an eight ball to save a baby? Whoa, I have many others, but this is like a middle of the road one. Yeah, because your life is so extreme, bro. <laughs> Dime Store Da Vinci says, I'm intrigued. I'd love to hear you elaborate. Do you think he came back to elaborate? No, of course he didn't. <laughs> how disappointing. What is even the context for that? You're like, yeah, you gotta put all this up your nose or I'm gonna feed this baby to those dingoes over there. <laughs> mm, dignified Fish says, the way my current employer is treating me after I suggested that I eventually wanted to start my own business, but would continue working for them until they retire in a couple of years. I've been made out to seem like the worst person alive and my resignation letter is being handed in today. I mean, why did you think that that would go over well? <laughs> that was a, a huge misplay on your part. I do find it hard to have that much sympathy. And why Werebear says, A friend of mine worked for a small business run by someone who was a good person, a bit of a control freak, but she always seemed nice. My friend had an opportunity arise that she couldn't pass up, so she handed in her notice. She didn't want to leave the owner high and dry, so she gave a full month's notice. I guess the owner took that personally because my friend was treated horribly and yelled at for about a week. By then, it was so bad she picked up her stuff and walked out and just never went back again. The owner called to apologize, but not love nor money would get my friend back through those doors. Sorry you're dealing with a similar thing, but as a life pro tip, if it really gets that bad, leave. Grab your stuff and just go. You don't owe them anything, and no matter what, you're already leaving on bad terms, which isn't really your fault. I definitely encourage the if it gets that bad leave sentiment. However, loose lips sink ships, okay? Discretion is key. There's no reason to tell your employer, hey, I'm out of here, I'm gonna go start my own business, just handing your letter and go do it. 
Sierra419 says, the joys of small business. I worked for a small family business that thought they were the Ford family. They thought their company was the best, that they were the best, and their family was the best. I didn't last for more than a couple years. The pay was completely terrible for the role that they expected me to wear a suit and a tie while making $35,000 a year. Yeah, some of those red flags from employers that we talked about in the last Ask Reddit, isn't it? <laughs> Obviously, you're not the Ford family, or else you'd be doing better. But I guess uh, confidence is key. Linotype echoes my exact sentiment and says, why? Why would you tell them that? That's like a cam girl telling her audience that she has a boyfriend. Yeah, I'm sorry to say it, OP. You shot yourself in the foot. It's not that outrageous of a story that your employer, I mean, they shouldn't mistreat you, but if you're asking me whether or not I believe uh, an employer can be vindictive, <laughs> I 100% believe that. I have seen that. I've also been on the receiving end of it. When I told my last employer, hey, I'm leaving, I'm gonna go do video editing instead of this inventory management crap that doesn't pay well enough. And uh, it didn't go well. <laughs> Makria says, I have several of these outrageous tales, including getting evacuated from a town as scuds were fired. I was installing a machine in a factory. I had a Thai boxing match in a bar in Thailand, delivered one of my own kids, got beat to a pulp and could have easily been killed, done one of the world's biggest bungee jumps, chased by a gunman, been in several riots and fights, almost fell out of a fairground ride, hanging on for dear life, Chased by police for driving without my license and got away. I was 14 and borrowed a friend's scooter. Bruh, you had me up until that last one. <laughs> you got away from the police on a scooter? I guess it could go places that uh, the cars can't go. And your average cop is not going to catch up to a kid on a scooter. Okay, I guess I buy that one too. <laughs> Not recalling more now, but I know when I'm telling people some of these stories, I'd find it hard to believe from someone else. I'll edit in any more juicy ones I can think of a bit later. Edit. I didn't see it, but a party of us traveling found a dead body in Australia. Was it eaten by dingoes? <laughs> uh, we brought substances to various countries, small amounts, personal use, got filmed for Border Patrol NZ. And Kubus Venter says, Have you ever tried, like, you know, just, like, chilling? <laughs> <laughs> this dude doesn't have an ounce of chill in his whole body. Stories like all of these make me super glad that I'm too paranoid to leave the house. <laughs> Optimal Concept 143. My grandma pointed a knife in my face to intimidate me, which I instinctively responded to by grabbing the knife by the blade to try and take it from her. Even if I told people this, they would still think I'm lying. I don't even bother talking about my abuse in general anymore anyway, since it's not like it helps me to relive it and there's nothing that others can do, but still. Otherwise, Window replies, actually, reliving it is one of the main treatments for last trauma slash PTSD. You go over it and over it repeatedly until you're bored of it, basically. I mean, that is a rather terrifying story. I had a mean grandma too, but really the meanest thing that she did was make tomato jello. And me and my brother thought it was cherry and we sat down to eat it and she tricked us. <laughs> She's like, now you have to eat all of it. And my brother ended up throwing up tomato jello all over the front lawn. <laughs> I don't know if that's so outrageous that people won't believe it, but it did happen. Didn't cause me any uh, lasting trauma, I don't think. Drew the Blue Duck says there were acres of forest behind my girlfriend's family farm, and we were driving a golf cart along the path beside it. All of a sudden, a 12-point buck crashed out of the woods right beside us and just ran alongside us for a good 100 meters before just disappearing back into the forest. It was the most majestic and surreal thing I've ever been a part of. I would just feel really lucky that he didn't decide to charge the golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> Obi-Wan Salabi says, yeah, I was driving home from my night shift job one evening when out of the blue, a buck jumped the livestock fence and charged a four lane divided highway only to headbutt the bed of my truck from the side. 
Deer are some of the weirdest animals ever. I don't know if I'd call them majestic at all this. They're basically like giant forest rats who come out and eat whatever vegetables you're trying to grow in the garden. I'll be real with you, I'm glad we don't have any in the Philippines. <laughs> if I saw one, I'd shoot it and eat it. I miss venison jerky, honestly. <laughs> Anyways, we're moving on. Jolly Consequence 49, I rode a goat up to the top of a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Please continue. I was on my own, made friends with him, hopped on his back, and he walked me to the top of the hill. No way, dude. How tall are you? How big was this goat? I got... <laughs> I got so many questions. I guess the point of the story is that it is outrageous, but I don't know. It's a bridge too far. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I, I, I don't know if I could buy into that. Dog Leash says, saw a Yowie, Australia's Bigfoot, when I was a kid. Oh, snap. I was in the passenger seat with my dad driving, little brother in the back. We were heading home along a single lane dirt road. We take it relatively slow as wildlife is pretty abundant, and echidnas, snakes, and lizards are often on those roads. We come around a bend to a straight stretch of road surrounded by bush. The road is cut into a hill. So the left is a few meters higher than the road, and the right drops off into a gully. From the left, a shape drops down onto the middle of the road, and in one motion, it bounds straight into the bush on the other side and disappears. All three of us saw it, and we all saw the same thing. An ape-like creature with long arms and shaggy white fur. Closest thing would be like a gibbon, but without the tail. What shocked me the most was the speed and athleticism, taking a 10-foot drop and then leaping 25 feet into a bush. <laughs> most people tell me it was probably a kangaroo, but this thing had no visible tail, shaggy hair, and its thick arms would have almost reached the ground, even if it was standing upright. Only rational explanation I can accept that isn't cryptid related is a drugged up wild man who left society decades ago and has never shaved and is Australia's undiscovered athletics champion. You have no idea how bad I want this to be real. <laughs> I'm not sure about cryptids and all of that, but I, I want to believe. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. It sounds like an awesome day and an amazing shared experience with your dad and brother. I'm glad you got to experience that. Much Difference says, I had a class with two people in it who were both named Unique, but each was spelled a different way, so I guess they were still technically correct? <laughs> <laughs> the irony. It, it's so delicious. Duel to do Duel says, <laughs> I like that username. I was in the shower and I had soap on my feet. I slipped on a curve in the tub and went right through the glass shower screen, but didn't smash it. And when I was laying on the ground wondering what the hell happened, I nearly had the glass screen fall on top of me. My dad comes up to see what the hell's going on and he sees me standing there, bullock naked and wrestling his shower screen. Pain accomplished asks the question that's on all of our minds, how the hell did you go through a glass screen? Well, when I slipped and fell towards it, I took the silicone that was holding it on off and it just swung forward and I sort of fell through it. <laughs> that is so uncanny. Come on now. I guess the only question left to ask is, did you win the wrestling match? And you're still here. The shower door isn't. So I guess I got the answer to that question too. <laughs> Winter Friend says, uh, I went swimming and got my bottom feet slashed by a broken glass bottle. So I limped home, and before leaving the hospital, I changed my swimming shorts to something more dry. But when I took the swimming shorts off, a small fish dropped on the floor, and I was freaking out like hell. There was blood everywhere from my foot, and a freaking fish was smearing it everywhere. <laughs> well, me and my mother were laughing super hard. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, your bottom feet? The bottom of your feet, right? You don't have two sets of feet. I need you to be very specific here. I also have to assume, uh, not American, because if I make it all the way home to change my shorts, the wound ain't that bad, right? <laughs> we can just wrap this up, it's fine. We'll have a laugh about the fish flopping around in my blood. <laughs> 
<laughs> How did a fish get into your, your swim trunks? That was the last sight he ever saw? This is going to make a great post on outrageous stories over on Fish Reddit. If he ever made it back home, he didn't. <laughs> uh, Yasabo13 says, I arrived in Vegas for fly drive holiday and me, my mom and dad got a taxi to a shopping mall. Coming back in another taxi, the driver said he was going to another hotel rather than wait the dars for another customer. Inside the hotel, we realized mom had left her bag in the taxi, containing our passports and several thousand dollars in cash. We rushed back outside, but he had already gone. We started asking other drivers for help to no avail. Suddenly I looked up and saw our taxi driver coming back to join the taxi queue. We rushed over, grabbed my mom's bag, the driver said that he'd left and then changed his mind and came back. It happened to us, and we hardly believe it. That is about the luckiest of lucky breaks that I've ever heard of. <laughs> what would happen if he really did just, just leave? Lady Luck was definitely smiling. I hope you took all that thousand dollars and went to the roulette table and put it on red. <laughs> then you have tens of thousands of dollars. You're welcome. Obi-Wan Salami, he's back in here again. <laughs> I've got many. Apparently you do. They couldn't all fit in the one post. I watched my buddy disarm a crackhead robber at a gas station. Had a few a-holes draw their gun on me in traffic. Back in my druggy days, got shot at through a door a few seconds after I knocked. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> watched another buddy of mine take a bite of flesh out of the calf of some skinhead. In a drunken and stoned haze, dove towards and captured a small pet bird that was let loose in my friend's house. I mean, that's probably the most believable of this group. <laughs> Can you believe it? He captured a small pet bird. You don't say. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> uh, they were shocked that I hadn't killed it. <laughs> I watched a black biker gang run the clan out of a redneck hick backwards Indiana town. Got a picture of the pot plant my dad gave my grandmother back in the 70s as a Christmas present. She babied it and said it had pretty flowers until it just disappeared. <laughs> my uncle was the prime suspect and that's just off the top of my head. I'm gonna repeat that comment from earlier and be like, yeah, but have you ever thought about just like, you know, just like chilling? <laughs> All this is way too much, man. I, I can't get involved. I'm glad I don't have outrageous stories. Or I do, but relatively few, compared to some of these people. Unless some of these people are just really good creative writers. Viper Nick says, Me and my brother were sitting on a roof late night during a blackout. The sky was dark, but not that dark. And then suddenly, the entire sky went pitch black. Like, someone had switched off the lights outside of the planet. It freaked us out, and we don't know what the hell it was, but... It just seems like a weird alien story if we ever tell it to other people. Eh, don't worry about that. That's just the simulation rebooting. <laughs> Could it have been the shadow of an airplane blocking out what little light there was? E.g. flying between you and the moon? Could happen, especially if there wasn't much light to begin with. Planes can cast pretty big shadows under the right conditions. And then Shady One says exactly my joke. Had to reboot the sim. Damn it! <laughs> Uh, of course that's the joke. Oh well, great minds and all that. <laughs> Janda Alaska says I was doing a six week student placement in a mental hospital, London St. Pancras. They had no record slash forewarning of my arrival and so they admitted me until lunchtime. Oh, then you got to hang out with all the people that you were going to be supervising later in the day. Build some morale, you know? They don't want to take your pills, but you got a rep now, so they're going to do it if you tell them to. I think it's the big brain play. <laughs> this mental hospital knew what they were doing the entire time. Calvary Scout 19D3. I was bow hunting out on my property one fall evening when a pack of cats ran by me. <laughs> Not a small pack, mind you. There were so many, I couldn't even count them. But if I was to ballpark it, I would say 25-ish. I stood there in disbelief for several minutes because I had never seen a cat on my property. It still boggles my mind when I think about it. I mean, it is fairly outrageous, but feral cats are definitely a thing. 
Maybe they were just confused. Maybe they thought you were bow hunting cats. <laughs> Let's see, somewhere a woman was hitting her breaking point and decided she was done dealing with dude's crap. They could hear that happening and were being called to their new home. <laughs> you hear that? Another crazy cat lady. Let's go eat all the tuna. <laughs> That's really funny though. Bill Ba Parker. Bill Ba Parker? When we were growing up, this one dude's mom stuffed a pinata thing with a bunch of fruit. And she must have left it out for a long time. Oh, God. Is she okay? Sound mentally? I don't think so. <laughs> All I remember was her son smashing some transformer looking thing and it breaking open and fruit falling out. And all of us being like, where's the candy? And then seeing random insects falling out along with the fruit and crawling and all the crap that fell all over the floor. Oh, and her son literally running away from the raining bugs and bananas. I remember that too. Dude, this is... <laughs> uh, what even is this story? That, that, I'm sorry, we have to section that dude's mom. I understand she's trying to help the kids eat healthy, fresh fruit. It is much better than candy, but you can't just set the pinata there. Oh, God, dude. What did you think was going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> Marishnu says, my grandfather was lost and presumably killed in the Bermuda Triangle. Wow, dude, that is pretty out there. If anyone's interested in the story, he was a pilot in the 1960s. The plane carrying him and three other people went down somewhere between Guyano and Florida. There are conspiracy theories involving the Cold War and his disappearance. My granny, who was left alone with three children, maintains that he simply ran away with another woman. Ah, <laughs> uh, the truth is the world may never know. History's mysteries. Spiffy says, I'm glad your grandma wasn't putting up with any of that conspiracy crap. <laughs> Marishnu continues, the worst part is she later on married another pilot whose plane was also mysteriously lost in the Amazon jungle. <laughs> Spiffy says, is your granny just really good at killing her husbands with conveniently dangerous jobs? Marishnu says, maybe, but she must have just gotten tired of all that because she later married a ship captain named Delmar and they lived together happily for 30 years. Hey, third time's the charm, am I right? <laughs> Once she gave up on all those bad boy pilots and found a nice guy ship captain, everything changed. <laughs> uh, oh my God, you're killing me. It must be the uniform, right? It has to be the uniform that's doing this to Granny. She's like, I can't help myself. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, cracking me up. All right, probably the last Ask Reddit rabbit hole for today. Well, there was this bear says, I hooked up with a vampire. <laughs> we always find the good cringe, don't we? I was new to Tinder and this was my first opportunity to hook up with someone. Her profile said, boyfriend is away looking for a fun night. She said she wanted to meet up for dinner at 9 p.m., but I messed up and I ate already and I told her that. We decided to meet at this abandoned bar because she refused to go to quote, cute girl bars. We then decided to get very drunk. During our conversation, this lady tells me that I don't have to worry about feeling ugly around her. No disrespect, but on the rating scale of 10, I'm at least like four numbers ahead of her. Yes, yeah, solid five. <laughs> we go back to her place and do the deed. I passed out because it took quite a bit of alcohol to get to this point, and I wake up with this painful screaming coming from next to me. This lady has wrapped herself in at least five different blankets, and it looks like I'm sleeping next to a cocoon. I think we saw this in the Guitar Beard Saga, didn't we? I ask what the issue is, and she tells me, She has to go pee! I said, go pee. She says, I can't! You cannot see me in the sunlight! <laughs> what? Uh, about 10 to 15 minutes go by of me begging her to use the damn toilet, but she won't go. Finally, I get out of her apartment because this is the most awkward crap I've ever had to deal with. I thought the feeling was mutual, 
But then I was hounded with texts from her to meet up again. I joked with friends that she's a vampire, but the more I tell the story, the more I tend to believe it. I mean, after you already did the deed, who, who really cares if they see you in the sunlight? Like, you got the job already, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Just just get up and go pee and maybe he'll leave and maybe he won't. And who really cares? Because we had fun last night, didn't we? Even though you're definitely four numbers behind me on this rating scale. <laughs> I can just say some stuff like that, OP. That's the most outrageous part of all. Just how much of a dog some dudes can be. He's like, yeah, she was about a two and a total pig, but I still stuck it to her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about develop some standards? But I don't know. I guess this is what Tinder is for. I'm an old man. But I do hope you enjoyed this episode, friends. I, I talked a little more, but I hope that's okay. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you thought. Share the video around. That's a pretty big brain play. Follow me on all the things. TikTok, Twitch, Twitter, whatever. <laughs> I'd like to thank my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous Patreon patrons and YouTube channel members. As always, tomorrow we'll read them out. Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, friends, bye-bye. Uh,